This is Goku Sun DBZ, and the, here is the next comic book review that I promised. This is for veterans and stuff, uh, retro fans, I believe. This is issue number one of Saban's Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, with pretty awesome artwork, I might add. Beautiful. And Tommy kicking some putty butt. And in the beginning, it's not going to start out in the very beginning, like for instance with the TV show, of course, My Morphin. Here we have, doing a little recording thing, Bulkmeyer. Which any of you that watch My Morphin know who he is. In front of, of course, the Youth Center. And here we have Skull of Age. Bulk Myron Skull of Age. Or just Bulk and Skull, rather. The good comic relief of the series. And of course, uh, we do recognize this sort of not so happy fella Godard, the right hand thing of, of course, the space witch Rita Repulsa. And, of course, these are the stupid putties. And here we have our dear heroes, ready to combat the putties. Which are pretty pathetic, really, for henchmen. Talk about easy to beat. And, of course, Bulk and Skull just being their idiot selves, as always. Bulk always being pushy, Skull being the... St uh, even more ridiculous sidekick. And there's our Power Rangers with the Green Ranger Tommy. Which, by the way, actually fights in... Actually does real fighting in MMA. Jason David Frank, for those who don't know the actor's real name. Check it out here on YouTube. A couple of his fights. Pretty awesome. Anyways, as we can see, they're interviewing different students from Angel Grove High and Angel Grove, which actually a lot of the uh, TV series, the American branch of the TV series, was actually recorded in California, but the movie was actually recorded in Sydney, Australia, which was an interesting little piece of information. And, of course, we see they're interviewing Tommy. And, as we can see, unlike a lot of comics, this does have a little bit more of, I guess you could say, it does still have a little bit of the elements of comic books, but it also has certain elements you see in, like, manga. Where it's sort of like the Street Fighter comics, I guess you could say. But it's sort of a cross. It's a hybrid art style, really. It's a cross between the two. Which is kind of nice to check out. And yeah, it's not based on any particular episode from the TV series, of course. But still pretty cool, nevertheless. And it's really awesome to go down memory lane and just bring back memories from the mid-90s. Because I was one of them who grew up on the original TV series. I remember actually when the very first episode debuted in February of 1993 in America. And of course there's a little, I guess you could say, he's thinking about Rita Repulsa. Which by the way had the Madonna weird things. Which is just plain ridiculous and over the top, but that's what I think a lot, speaking as my, for the 20-something and 30-something age group who grew up on the original series, I speak for us when I say that was a certain part of the charm. And here we are on the moon with Repulsa's lair. Dun, 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 dun. Well, technically, that's not Rio Repulses. That's Lord Zed's technically music, but it's the only one I can remember off the top of my head. And that is Scorpina, one of her other right hands. Of course, that is the ridiculous Rita Repulsa, 
which is one of the most ridiculous outfits I've ever seen, and one of the most over top characters. And these are two of the most stupid characters ever in any Power Ranger series. These two were supposed to be somewhat comic relief. I guess you could see the evil equivalent of Balkan Skull, basically. But as you can see, she's smiling her evil smile with her stupid staff. And Scorpina with one ridiculous helmet. Yeah, as I say, that was one of the charms about the original series, was the cheesiness factor. But it was very common among 80s and 90s shows. 90s was the end of the good cheesiness stuff. Of course, here we have Tommy Oliver. Kicking the crap out of some putties, trying to save the day, and here we've got one of the mm, dinosaurs blasting lasers back and forth between it and the monster, which looks like a reject from Godzilla. Just doing pew 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 pew, pew, pew at each other, basically, more or less. But awesome, cool. Love the fact of the detail they managed to get with the dagger, which is just beautiful. And I love the whole, also angle with the whole shading factor. And just the certain positions of some of the art shots are just really well done. And do help capture some of the awesomeness of the original series, as well as capture some of the cheesiness with some of the dialogue as well. Of course, there's the monster with more, which has a hole in the center of his chest. Looks like he should be a monster from Bleach. Insert another anime reference. Instead of the Power Rangers, I guess they need Ichiko Kurosaki or somebody from the Soul Society. Just saying. And there he is, running off to be the hero. And looking awesome. And you gotta admit, that outfit of his is just so cool. Jason David Frank really did a great job. In real life, he is a third degree black belt. He even has his own dojo in California, believe it or not. And there we have Tommy and Kimberly discussing it with the big floating head, Zordon. Which, there's so many jokes you can make about the Power Rangers show, it's insane. And here we go, back to Tommy's home. And psh Blade to his deck. Yeah, and guess what it is? Squirpina. With one ridiculous costume, though pretty cool looking overall design. Very loyal to the original series, I will say. The art is so well done. And I have nothing but positive things to say about this. It really does capture the, uh, and really does give you that Nostalgia feel really is like a blast from the past from when you're younger. Well, at least for me, anyways. And here we have. Bam, looking at that alien trying to get away to survive. Here's some awesome different multi covers that are available, like different variants. There's seriously a lot, but there was only two covers available at my local comic book store, sadly. Uh. And another comic from uh, the comic book developer, which is called Boom Comics. And here's a little side thing. Which, by the way, look at this. That is pretty cool looking space station, but I hate to tell them, it doesn't feel like some from Power Rangers. It feels like something which, by the way, actually it's not from Power Rangers, it's from Joyride. This is a little preview, actually. But if you look at that space station, doesn't it kind of remind you of something from, say, either Gundam 
or another anime called Outlaw Start, which are both made by the same company, Bandai, or Namco Bandai now, should I say. Just pretty cool looking. And I might check out actually this particular comic. I'm kind of curious because I like the overall look of things, and given it takes place in space. To be continued. And yeah, I won't be getting this. I can say that. I'm not rather fond of pink. Just saying. Can you say Spider Man ripoff? And that is issue one of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers review. Uh, please thumbs up this video. Like, subscribe. Leave me a comment. Tell me if you'd like me to do more future Power Ranger comic book reviews. And tell me if you watched the original series or what your favorite series was. Um, follow me at twitter.com slash gokusundbz as well as on googleplus.com slash gokusundbz. And I'll try next time to get back to what I wanted to do before, which is issue one comic book review of Descender. But right now I'm working on two more special reviews, but they won't be comic books, just so you know. And until next time here in YouTube land, peace out, and remember, same, same YouTube time, same YouTube channel, which is what I meant to say last time I got backwards though.